Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna do some oil power about pets today. So I have all kinds of notes and this was back from convention in September, but I wanted to share this because uh, more questions on this are coming up and I just wanted to refresh this because I didn't save a video from last time that I recorded this. I just did it live and I think I lost it somewhere. So I wanna make sure I have a recorded video that I can send a link if anyone needs it. So starting in, the first thing when it comes to oils with pets is that number one, just like oils for ourselves or oils for our children, we're looking at something that is of a much higher quality. So you're not going to just grab an oil off the grocery sh store shelf just because it's an essential oil and use that one on your pet when you wouldn't use that on yourself. So know that there are very, very few oils out there that are pure and unadulterated and doTERRA is the only company that I trust for that. So when it comes to making sure there's not solvents, making sure there's not uh, pesticides, herbicides, all uh, heavy metals, all of the other things, we wanna make sure they're as pure as possible. So um, when it comes to doTERRA essential oils, even though doTERRA's oils are of the utmost quality, that doesn't mean that every single oil is going to be used on your pet. They have different metabolic systems than the next, than the human does, especially cats. Dogs are a little bit different than cats and, and vice versa, and we are different than they are. So we can't expect that the oils we use on ourselves are going to work exactly the same as them. So we have to make sure that we're being careful with our pets. However, there are many oils that work uh, like they do on us, they, they work well on pets as well. So we're gonna go through a few of them. And remember, I am not a veterinarian. I am not going to say anything that is just my opinion. The only thing I'm gonna give you is from the veterinary panel through doTERRA. So the things I'm telling you are from the veterinary panel. They're not me, the non-vet. So I have the utmost respect for veterinarians and I'm not a veterinarian, so this is just from them. So um, oils that are not safe for pets. So I'm gonna start with that. Oils that are generally not safe for pets, you're gonna look at birch, clove, oregano, now, Tea tree or melaleuca is an oil that some vets choose to use infrequently. So on a home use basis, let's just not go with tea tree oil or melaleuca because we're not the vets, right? So, and thyme and wintergreen. So those are oils that are generally not safe to be used on them topically or giving them it internally or anything like that. So birch, clove, oregano, tea tree or melaleuca, thyme and wintergreen. Oils that are tend to be really great oils for dogs, tend to be lavender, frankincense, helichrysum, um, sometimes lemongrass, geranium, these can be really great oils. So I'm gonna go through some notes that I have from the veterinary panel, just so you have some ideas of how to use oils for your family members who are your pets. So one of them, one of the key things I wanna get across though is that you're going to treat the uh, pet as as you would for a baby or a child. So you're gonna dilute your oils. So typically the veterinary panel was saying a one to three ratio on your oil to carrier oil. I tend to go about a drop of oil to a teaspoon size of a fractionated coconut oil. So that's typically what I would do. Or if you didn't have fractionated coconut oil, you can use just regular raw coconut oil that you cook with, an organic version of that, or organic grapeseed or um, other carrier oils that you could use. So, um, what we're gonna go with is things like, say you know your, your dog is having some stomach upset. So for instance, my little wee dog, she was having some um, uh, loose stools, she had a little more urgency, so she had to get out more, so something was going on. I don't know if she ate something in our house, I don't know what she did, but there was something going on there. And in that case, because she's such a small dog, I might dilute a little more, just like I would for a smaller child. So instead of going maybe one drop to a teaspoon of carrier oil, I might go one drop to a tablespoon of carrier oil. Now she cleared up pretty fast. I didn't end up using Digestin for her, 
But for this scenario, I would use Digestsen, a drop of Digestsen into one teaspoon or one tablespoon, and then rub that on her abdominal uh, area. Now, this is an oil that doesn't have any of the contraindicated oils for pets, and it's one that works very well on animals. And the vet panel who suggested this as a use, they're the ones who have used these oils on animals and had amazing successful res results. Punk Punk Cherokee. Hey guys, Punkin. They're sleeping usually at this time. So that's the ratio you would use. Now, fleas or ticks, this is a common thing. And typically, come here, pups, come here. You see her coming in the background there? I don't know if you can see her. <laughs> I just woke her up. Come here, Bucket. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Oh, you're sleepy. Come here. So she's got her sweaters on, and she's only 10 pounds. So you can see why, for her, I would choose to dilute a little more because she's so wee. And this is a dog who sleeps, who likes to sleep. We don't always like it, but who likes to sleep under the covers in the bed. And um, so, these, so we're always aware of what's on our bodies because she likes to lick everyone and everything. And what we're, what we're diffusing, and she's, you know, has always been great in our bedroom with our diffusing. Oh, who's a good baby. And... Um, but our husky, the other dog, who's still sleeping, I think, she is a bigger dog, so I might dilute with one um, teaspoon of carrier oil instead of a tablespoon. Oh, I know. You want to sit down? Good girl. Um, so tiny dog, a little different dilution. So fleas and ticks. Here are the oils for fleas and ticks, diluting the way that we uh, that I just mentioned. Fleas and ticks, arbor vitae, geranium, lemongrass cedar wood and possibly rosemary as well now in the blend that doTERRA has which is uh, terra shield that can be an oil or a blend that you can use for animals as well it's already diluted in the terra shield but you might want to dilute just a little bit more in order to see how your your dog responds just to make sure that it's really calm and mild initially and then maybe you use the regular because it's already diluted uh, previously so what you're gonna do is mist the pet with your spray of either what you've made with your Arbor Vitae, Geranium, Lemongrass, diluted, mist your pet, and then pet. Pet them to get that throughout their limbs, throughout their body, overall just pet them. So you're using oils that are um, natural or woody oils that aren't contra contraindicated for animals. So those would be the vet panel recommendation for fleas or ticks. I personally used lemongrass on a bandana for our bigger dog Cherokee and I would put some drops on the bandana and put that around her neck and I didn't put it right on her skin but that had a great effect overall uh, for repellent and I've never used any of the um, the meds or the flea or tick treatments or anything like that because I just choose not to have them have that and at the same time understand some of the risks that come with the uh, the seasonal little bugs that uh, come along. So uh, anxiety in pets. So a number of animals are afraid of new places, afraid of new people, afraid of thunder, loud noises, all kinds of things. So you're still going to use some of the same oils that we would use for anxiety or calming, which would be a serenity blend, lavender, frankincense. Those are amazing oils for calming and grounding and those would be fantastic for your pets. And a way that you can apply them that has them feel really good, especially in an anxious situation, would be diluted, like I talked about before, all of them are diluted for pets, but diluted on the tips of the ears, diluted in between the pads of the paws, and you might be rubbing on the belly just to give them a soothing experience with that. So diluted oils and, and rubbing on the belly, and that will be that calming, um, option for them but key oils for anxiety or calming serenity frankincense and lavender uh, you're not going ever in the ears or the eyes tips of ears only and um, and going from there okay allergies lots of animals have allergies now I'm talking about the kind that seasonal allergies so they tend to flare up the dog might get the symptoms because the change in season not the allergies that are coming from food because if it's food you're gonna go back to the food and again, I'm not the veterinarian. I'm going from what the vet panel says. 
Um, so seasonal threads, this one's gonna be the same as it is for us, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, the blend of those three. So I would put a drop of each of those and a tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil, and there is your antihistamine blend or your blend that's uh, there for their seasonal threats. This can be the tips of the ears again, this can be on the stomach, and for a larger animal, you can even do a veggie cap internally. Again, this is the veterinary panel advice, not mine. So I, I'm going with this. Now, cats specifically though, this seasonal threat, lemon is not something you would ever use on cats. Their liver has different enzymes than ours does, so you don't want the cats having the lemon. In this case, you would replace with lemongrass. So in cats, instead, if they're having seasonal allergies because of the change in season, then you're gonna go with lemongrass instead of the lemon, okay? So another topic they talked about, so for the veterinary panel, is sport dogs. These are gonna be animals that get abrasions, that get maybe cuts or bleeding or things like that. So if you want to treat your animal with that, then, and same with horses, say they've been out um, on a farm but they've got lots of space to walk, or they've been riding, or they've been transported and they've got some abrasions or cuts or things like that. So then you're gonna do, um, you can use a spray for this and you can mix and dilute, and you can dilute with aloe vera or fractionated coconut oil, either would be good for the carrier, but um, dilute with that and use frankincense, lavender, myrrh, helichrysum, especially if there's bleeding. So the helichrysum will be fantastic for that bleeding and healing. So again, frankincense, myrrh, lavender, helichrysum, and the ratio again would be one drop of each for about a tablespoon so then you just up that depending on the size of your bottle that you're making and if you want it more liquid and less oily you would have the aloe vera instead of the fractionated coconut oil so that's an option as well and then skin health a lot of um, animals suffer with flaky skin and it may have to do with allergies so going back to the allergy thing but something that um, is coming from maybe what they're eating so in that case Food is number one, just like it is for us. Eating really good food is going to be the key to having your animal have really good skin health, just like us, skin, hair, all of that, it comes from within. So if they have a really good diet and you've figured out that there's um, nothing going on when it comes to allergies to their food, but maybe they're having a little trouble digesting. This is where Terrazyme, and who would have thought, but this is where Terrazyme, the digestive enzyme that we might use, can be put into their food to help them digest and break down some things that they may be struggling with, especially if they're an older dog and they don't have as many of the digestive enzymes as we, same thing that happens to us when we uh, age as well. But again, you're using smaller amounts, so you might use just a quarter of a capsule into their food. Just try that first and see how they respond. You're gonna be able to see their poops and know whether that is having a good effect with those digestive enzymes. So digestive enzymes perhaps, omega-3 fatty acids, make sure they're eating food with good omega-3 fatty acids. And then other ones when it comes to digestive issues or skin health, it's gonna be the digestin I started off with. So you're diluting maybe one drop to one tablespoon of fractionated coconut oil and using that on their stomach for um, digestive health. And then you can also use a roller body and you, a roller bottle, diluted in a roller bottle if you need it on hand for their belly. Um, frankincense and copaiba are excellent for their skin health as well. That would be something you can dilute and put on topically. The copaiba is that CBD2 receptor oil that is not a CBD oil or a THC or anything like that, but it does target the CBD2 receptors. So when it comes to pain, anxiety, skin issues, there's so many things that that can help with. Uh, same for horses. So horses, when it comes to any pain they may experience or need calming, then they can, they, some uh, vets had them even lick copaiba off of their hands and the horse would um, lick the oil off of the hands. So horses though, on the spine, topically for horses, copaiba, also oils like digestin, aroma touch for their joints, so that blend aroma touch, especially if they're an active horse. So on their joints, aroma touch, 
Breathe has been successful with horses. Balance as well. They put balance in the mane of the horse. Um, and then also frankincense uh, as well. So those would be fantastic oils for horses. Um, recovery from surgery or senior pets. Uh, Aroma Touch is excellent as well. So that's a blend of oils, especially very good for joints and joint pain or post-surgery. It's calming, it's soothing, plus it feels good for their joints. So those were oils recommended for senior or post-surgical um, pets as well. So again, I want to finish up with this because I've given you a lot of information on here, but I want to finish up with saying that it's absolutely true. There are some oils that are not safe for animals. There are lots of oils that are safe for animals. And anything that I've given in this particular video today is all coming from the vet panel through doTERRA. So these have been uh, solutions that have been tried, utilized a lot on animals, and utilized for years and years on animals. These are not, and researched as well, these are not just my opinion. These are ones that have come from a panel of veterinarians that use oils all the time on their patients and have gone towards the research to figure out what are the best oils for that. So that's where I'm getting my information. So go back in this video if you're just joining now to learn a little bit more about seasonal threats, um, anxiety for animals, skin health, and all that good stuff. And again, remember, treat your animal just like you would um, a child in diluting that way. And make sure that they always, if you're diffusing, they always have an option to leave the room if something or a smell is making them uncomfortable because their senses are so much uh, more attuned and just magnified far more than ours ever are. So feel free to post any questions. I may or may not be able to answer them, but I hope this helps you in feeling like you're really able to feel confident with your oils and your pets and uh, have some options for them as well. And look for a natural vet or someone who is interested in, in natural options for your animal as well. So that's for your other part of your family. Have a fantastic day, guys. I will not be on next week because I will be at leadership convention in San Diego for doTERRA. So I will likely be learning some more great stuff that I can share with you as well. Have a great week, guys. Mwah.